that last one got y'all up of in your feelings. Anything I bring you is based upon truth and fact. The fact is that most black men who are married are married to black women right now, and we're suffering all these ills. So from a logical conclusion, marrying more black women isn't going to change anything because most black men who are married are married to black women. Also, we're going to talk about the black people marking the department. Years ago, I had a friend and we used to talk about it. And I used to tell him of all the stuff I was able to accomplish because if you are an intelligent, well-mannered, respectable, successful black man, you can do whatever you wanna do. You can marry whoever you wanna do. The world is open for you because of the black men marketing department. Black men are cool, black men are hip. Never before, and also part of this started with the black athletes who went to these colleges and it began to get out. It was like, hey, get you a black athlete. And this is one of the reasons, and I, if I've, you know, I've got a few division one athletes who watch this channel who I've been talking to, if they wanna chime in, when you become a successful black athlete on college, chicks be lining up for you. And this is one of the aspects of the black male marketing department that works in our favor. Right now, like when I were running my Craigslist protocols, I had no problems. I had no problems doing what I was doing, none whatsoever, because I was a successful, intelligent black man that represented myself very well. One of the big issues that we have with the black community is the black people marketing department speaks of the ghetto and hood culture more so than success in coming up. And I've had comments like, oh, you know, there's only a small number of black folks like that. Really? They have not one, but two shows on Showtime about the dysfunctionality and the ups and downs of the people in Chicago. Is one of them, is, the show is called The Shy, and I think, well, the other one is 20s, and I think that's based in California. But unless it's hip, cool, and fly, it doesn't meet the criteria of the black people marketing department. This is one of the points I've been trying to drill home with you guys for the longest, because so many of you don't seem to understand the harm. One thing that works that is a product of the black people marketing department is the single mother who raises her son to become a, an NFL or NBA star. That is part of the black people marketing department. Give you a case of how the black people marketing department was working in the case of Richard Sherman. Based upon all of the marketing of Richard Sherman and the highlighting of his mother, you would have never known he had a father. He had a father who drives a garbage truck who refuses to live off his son's money. You would have never known that unless you wanted to look a little deeper because of the black people marketing department is that a single mother is the best thing on the planet. And when a single mother wins, we all win. You would have, I'd be like, cause this is one of the things that gets me because I see this over and over and over. As a kid, I used to read Essence Magazine until I began to notice a little trend that they would speak of these women who were extremely successful and leave out the part about their male counterpart, husband, a father who paved the way for them. It was pretty much like, I did this all on my own. No, you didn't. But this is the story, this is the portrait that was painted consistently. And I have not picked up a copy of Essence in the longest because Essence used to be a fair, balanced, and it used to be a magazine that many men could get value out of before they changed. I don't know what it's doing now. It's been decades since I've read it, but I've noticed that change. And this is one of the issues with the black people marketing department. Give you uh, another one. Tracy Edmonds of Babyface's ex-wife. She was portrayed to be this real estate mogul when she was just a real estate agent that was doing side work in videos. And this is how she met Babyface. And to her credit, she did build 
a remarkable business, made some nice movies and got rich. But one of the things is that even before she even got there, she was portrayed to be better than she was. And this is one of the things, because if you will notice with the black folks marketing the department, certain things will be hyped up and certain things will be denigrated. Enter Byron Allen. Right now, Byron Allen is the hottest thing on the market. He's, a, he's bought the Weather Channel, he's done really successful. The black marketing department is pushing him, they claim him, he was on The Breakfast Club. But let's go back in time when Byron Allen was on his way up. He was considered an educated lame. He was considered goofy. He was considered the, the black guy that dates white women. This is what the black marketing department did to Byron Allen. And do not put in the comments that did that not happen. I am roughly Byron's age and I remember the whole thing because I, being a nerd, understood and felt his pain. Because here's the thing. I've been watching in the black market, the black people marketing proper, the marketing department operate for many years. And if you're not from the hood, you're not ghetto, you're not a single mother. If you don't have some fantastic coming up from the hood to successful story, the black people marketing department does not embrace you. I want you to think. If it wasn't for Ebony and Jed showcasing kids who did well on the SAT, you never would have heard about it. The black people marketing department does not support and uplift little kids. Chris Rock even made a skit about it. Just come out to jail, okay, we're gonna throw him a party. And then we talk about, I just got my masters. People like, yeah, whatever. That's the black people marketing department and you know, as I put out these videos to educate you, I'm giving you the truth because I am a free agent. I get to do what I want, say what I want, be however I want, because I don't really give a damn what any of you think about me. And that gives me a lot of freedom and license because there is some person in the comments talking about black men should marry successful black women. And there was a few people pushing back on this, like, where are all these successful black women? Please show them to me. <laughs> The reality is a successful man has a hard time finding a successful mate. If I was gonna hold Pat and only date women who made the kind of money I made, I wouldn't, I'd would be lonely. I wouldn't date anyone because you know, there are not that many. There are some to be sure, but categorically, there are not that many, many women who are on my financial level. Not many at all. I have yet, during my Craigslist protocols, funny place, I was dating a woman that was worth $10 million. And it was a different experience. And for all you guys who like, don't date no white women, don't date no white women, don't. She was white, she was 10 million, she was worth 10 million and she treated me extraordinarily well. When I see your comments talking about only dating black women, I begin to feel that that's all that you think that you can do because that's all what you've been designed to do. Because here's the thing, if you take a little black child and you take a little white child and a little Asian child and you put them in a pen and you don't tell them that they're different, they will play together. They will play together, they will have fun together, they will become friends. Only when adults start saying, don't you be playing with that little Asian baby? Don't you be playing with that little white baby? Don't you be playing with that little black? This is when things get messed up because humans were programmed to interrelate with each other across cultural boundaries, except when there is this fence, this attitude, there is this strange, strange attitude of, well, you shouldn't deal with them because they're different. This is another functionality of the black people marketing department. They different. And the black people marketing department will tell you all day long how rich white people live, how rich white people are exist, how white people behave, how white people get down, yet they will not have one single rich white friend or any white friends. They've never gone to their house for Thanksgiving. They've never interacted with them on the social level. But the black people market department seems to know exactly how these people are with little to no interaction. And it's just assumption. It is assumption. 
Because once again, in the last video, I said that most black men who are married are married to black women, which is a statistical fact. And then people are upset because people such as myself, free agents who've decided that I'm not gonna stick to the status quo. I'm gonna do whatever I, I want to do, whatever makes me happy. There are more men who are like, oh, I can do this. And for those of us who were nerds, for those of us who are considered, quote, the educated lames, for those of us who are considered in the same ilk as Byron Allen, previous pre-billion dollars, we know that the black people marketing department is not having favorable commentary for us. There was a live stream I was watching and they were talking about it and it was with um, one of the guys, he's a Republican YouTuber and he was talking about the subject, about how he was mocked and made fun by other black people and then other black folks on the panel were trying to act like this did not happen. Well, I don't remember anything happening like that. And th this is one thing. The black people marketing department will shift his viewpoints to fit its agenda. Blatantly, the black people marketing department will lie and do what's called revisionist history. Well, no, that didn't happen. No, it didn't get down like that. Revisionist history is a big, big compartment of the black people marketing department. And you know, people like me who are putting out this content, because if you're steeped, if you are a participating member of the black people marketing department, you're not gonna like me because I'm gonna cause you to have headaches, I'm gonna cause you to face truth, I'm gonna cause you to confront some issues you don't want to. And you know what's funny? Uh, someone put in this comment, and this this is something that happened. Let me tell you a little story. Years and years ago, I was dating this black woman, and she had a problem with my viewpoints. You know, when she listened to me and she did the things I did, we got along fine. And then once she went back and started talking to her ghetto family, then this is when problems started to happen. And then all of a sudden it became this thing. Even though we went out, I treated her well, the sex were amazing. It was like, well, you need to uh, do more things for your mother. I was like, what? Why don't you send your mother an iPad? I'm like, cause she don't need one. And it, it became this whole thing. And this has become one of the controlling mechanisms that many black women will use upon you. It is how you treat your mother. If you don't treat your mother well, you're not gonna treat me well. Even though that is an implausible, stupid concept. And it became this thing, even though it was treating her well, we were having fun, it became this issue because, you know, I've talked about my relationship with my mother and where we were. And it is funny how black women will bring that up Regardless of how badly your mother treated you, regardless of how mean and ruthless your mother was to you, you were supposed to sit down and love your mother and just forget all of the pain and agony that happened. It's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. And typically black women that do that should be avoided at all costs because they want to be worshiped and treated in a such a manner versus to earn your love and respect. And let's talk about this. This is one of the biggest issues with I have with the black people marketing department, that black men and black women should get together regardless of affection, regardless, it's like, hey, you should marry a black woman. It's kind of like an Indian arranged marriage. It's like, okay, that's your wife. You're gonna marry her. You're not gonna marry who you wanna marry. You're not gonna marry who makes you happy. You're not gonna marry that chick that you had the great sex with. No, you're gonna marry uh, Ifugu over here because she comes from a good family. Have you ever noticed that when you're an educated lame or a nerd, when your black female friends are trying to fix you up, they always fix you up with a booger wolf or a hobbit? And you'd be like, cause see, that's how they see you. They would never fix up one, someone they figure is cute or attractive with this booger with a hobbit. They would never do that. And it was really interesting. And I will go ahead and say that I discovered an amazing array of affection and beauty by moving outside of what I was supposed to do based upon the, the, the black people marketing department situation.
I remember I was in Hawaii and I was walking on the beach and I ran into this Asian chick and we just started having this conversation. Next thing we know, we, it, was, it was effortless, it was seamless because Asian women like smart men. They appreciate that. A lot of black women, there's some black women who appreciate smart women. The most category, no. You need to be a hard working man, bring home your checks, shut up and listen to me when I have problems. Yeah, that's a whole nother video right there. But one of the things that I found by being a free agent and going out and doing these things is there's a lot of love out there in the world. And for you black men who are wedded to the ideal of marrying a black woman, that's your prerogative. But do not be disturbed, do not be butthurt, do not be strengthened. I don't even, I don't even have a language for it when I present an ideal to you that, because I feel that the reason that some of you are hitting out or lashing out is because it's something you want to do, but you don't think that you could do it. I think that's where a lot of this is coming from. And also with the black people marketing department, enter O'Shea Duke Jackson. O'Shea Duke Jackson has been trying to create content and programming that uplifts black folks and what he has found out, it doesn't work. When he created this celebrity junk, when he started talking about celebrities, when he and uh, Donovan Sharp had the, the men's talk show, that worked. And I'm here to tell you, I've changed the content on this channel because talking about business over here does not resonate with you people at large. All of the people who are interested in the business stuff have gone over to Savage Finance. And I'm just like, literally, Savage Finance has had more views than this channel this month. I have just see it like, I'll put up a certain video that talks about business and success and it just will not go that far. I've had several videos just pop over at Savage Finance because I'm adjusting my content for the audience. And this is why you're getting this kind of content because this is what resonates with you. Not me talking about business, not me talking about LLCs, not me talking about how to make a, be a better sale. No, 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 that ain't working. But if I want to talk about some topical black people issues, woo, 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 that has your britches burning. This is fact, I've got evidence. I can look in my YouTube statistics and see which videos pop. I can see it. And that's why you folks were talking about me about black success. Why should I be so hard on black people and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, really? Really? I've been dealing with this stuff for like, and I'm about to say something that's going to be a hotep trigger moment. 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, moving toward 2014. You know, 90% of my customers were white. Heavens to Murgatroyd. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me that you put your Negro self on the YouTube and white people gave you money? Yeah. Which also flies in the face of the black people marketing. Well, you start a business, no black folks, no, no, no white folks gonna buy from you. They ain't gonna shop from you. They ain't gonna do that. It's not true. See, I am the black people's marketing department's worst nightmare because I have experience that is counter to the crap that is put out. For, for about five years, 90% of my customers were white and they had no problem giving this black man money. And a few of them bought five, 10 and $15,000 packages. So when I sit here and tell you that these things are possible, it's not me just blowing smoke up your butt. These have been my experiences. And this the whole notion that America sees you as black first. Let's dive and unpack that. Does America see you as black first or do you walk into the room as black first? See, that, that nuance there is really precocious because like I said, when I was in Japan, I had no problems. The Japanese people embraced me. There was no racism. Then years later, oh, the Japanese people are super racist. Black folks are sensitive as hell. That's the problem because I can understand wanting to be respected as a human being and wanting to be treated fairly. I have no problem with that. 
But what I have a problem with is I saw someone and he said, I left Sandy Springs because I wanted to be around more black folks. Being around all these white people make me uncomfortable, which is an internal issue. It's not an external issue. I've been in Sandy Springs 11 years. I've not had a problem. I've not had one racist incident. I've never been called out my name. I've been treated with the utmost respect in 11 years. And I had people on the periphery telling me how I was going to be treated in my neighborhood, how I was going to be treated by the white folks, and none of it came true. But that's the black people marketing department. That is the situation that goes and gets down because I'm here to tell you that if you are a free thinking, progressive black person, the world is your oyster. And this isn't like, well, uh, I gotta forget that I'm black. How the hell are you gonna forget you're black when you every day you brush your teeth, you see you black in the mirror? Some of you are so simple-minded, it's ridiculous. What I'm saying is you are an American first. And if you operate from an American position, you operate on American values, you would be successful in this country. This is where you were born. It is part of your birthright. And let's talk about slavery. If you have a chance to come up and use America to become wealthy, don't you think you owe it to your ancestors? Don't you think you owe it to the people who were beat and whipped for learning how to read? Don't you think you owe it to your ancestors versus sitting around bemoaning the fact that they were treated unfairly, they were put in chains and they were abused? How does that help you and how does that help them? The past is the past. We should look at the past, we should learn from the past, but you cannot continue to cling to the past as if it's reality. Because for all of you Hoti people in the comments, I was like, please name some bad things that are happening. Recently, we have a pandemic and I've seen a number of black people get these PPP loans and pandemic SBA loans. They ain't supposed to be happening based upon the black people marketing department to it. Well, the white folks ain't trying to give you no money. They ain't trying to give you no money. Nah, 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 man. You know, the white man, he, he trying to keep his foot on your neck. The white man. And here's something else for the black people marketing department. The white man is catching hell. The white male has been in a state of decaying orbit for the last 40 years. The white man who used to be at the top of the food chain has seen his status, has, has seen hostile treatment from his woman, and he has lost status and prestige across the world. And you keep acting like he's the top dog. It ain't like that anymore. It's just not. The white man is not the alpha dog. He's not the top. And like I said, to Hip Hop Records, who I left a comment to because the comment finally showed up, you are a limited man with a limited thought capacity because one of the things is that if you see terms, the world in, well, this is for black folks, this is for white folks, then you have limited yourself. And once again, I see myself as equal to any white man. And in many cases, I see myself as superior based upon my accomplishments. I wrote a book and made $1.5 million. 99.9% .9 of white men have not done that. That means that I have some extra stuff that they don't have. So I'm not trying to be equal to them just to be, oh, you know, I want to be with the white man. Let's rub shoulders. Let's be buddy. No, I don't really give a damn about that. What I do care about is success, happiness, and abundance. And I have on this channel talked about competing in the marketplace with white people and winning competition. Those videos don't get a lot of views. When I talk about going to work, rolling up your sleeves, going out, killing dragons, no, no, I don't get a lot of views from the black folks. And this is something else too. The, the way that I'm designing Savage Finance is because this is this is a shift that has happened with my YouTube audience. In the beginning, my YouTube audience used to be primarily white and they used to spend a lot of money. Over the, the years, my YouTube audience has shifted to black and thank goodness and positively, a lot of black people have and will continue to spend money with me. And for you black folks, I really appreciate you. I really do because it happened because what happened is my revenue kind of tailed down and it kind of stalled out for a while and then it jumped back up because I started 
appealing to progressive blacks because there's a lot of progressive black people who watch this channel who never comment who will agree with everything i say because they're sick and tired of the black people marketing department ghettofication of black folks and you know they're really like well you we know like that really i don't know how many times i've had a black person i've never met or talked to in life want to refer to me using to n-word as if that is normal. That is a telltale sign of which group of black folks is bigger. The ghetto hood culture is bigger than the lot and segment of black progressives. It just is. I know you hate that, but it is. And it's like messages, because one day, one of those little hood ghetto kids is gonna watch a video like this and he's gonna realize he's gonna be have options and he's gonna break away from his programming, break away from his family and start living a progressive black person life. That's what y'all afraid of. You're afraid of the reduction in the ranks of the ghetto hood culture because that's one of my jobs. I wanna reduce that. I wanna make that segment of black America small as possible. And it's people like me who have demonstrated success, who post receipts all the time about everything I say that will open up and wake up these little children to know that they can be on a different path. Because some of you, there ain't no hope for you. There ain't no hope for you. You will argue with me all day about stuff because, as if we're peers. My peers are paying cash for houses. My peers are paying cash for cars. There ain't that many people doing that. So I don't really have that many peers. If that sounded elitist, so, well, well, so be it. Cause I'm an elite motherfucker. Yeah, I said that. So once again, understand that the black people marketing department is harmful. It's not in your best interest if you're a progressive, fun, free loving, black for a person that wants to be successful in life that wants to move up the ladder and wants to have a life of abundance and financial success. It ain't for you. I'm telling you, look what they did to Byron Allen. Byron Allen had to become a billionaire before he became embraced by black folks. Byron Allen should have been embraced by black folks from day one. He was out in Hollywood, he was successful, he was doing these things, but he had to become a billionaire to be embraced by black folks. Because black folks, like, hey, you know, you just regular. You gotta do something extraordinarily for me to give you a little, little bit of attention, a little bit of respect, a little bit. So that's all I got for you guys. Be sure to go below, get 30 days to 2,500, the hustler's mindset, pimping your mind for success. On that note, all of you distractors and dissenters, how many black folks are you helping with free online courses that teach them how to make money? Zero. But you got an argument with me when you're not doing something for this so-called black community that you love. You're not educating, you're not joining. I've actually volunteered, read to little black kids. You're not doing any of that. You're just here on YouTube trying to go back and forth. And when you become disrespectful, you will be blocked and your comments will be deleted. Yeah, I'm gonna keep my comment feed clean, sensible and responsible and respected because I know a lot of you are just straight up assholes that just want to put in a little dig because that's the only power that you have. So with that, go below, get 30 days to 2,500, go below, get the hustler's mindset, pip your mind for success, and go below and get sign up for the Oxygen Banking app. I'm here to tell you Oxygen does not extend credit. That was some misinformation that I was fed. But I feel that the Oxygen Banking app will be a great place for your new money that you get from 30 days to 2,500 because it's a pretty slick act. And on the personal side, they are 100% solid. The business side, they're a little shaky. I will be doing a review of another bank where you can set up your business accounts. So that's all I got for you guys. Be sure to go below and watch this next, next video, this next video.